All right, tell you what, there's four Super Mario Brothers 3 um, uh, ones. There's Super Mario Brothers 3. Sure. That's, uh, there's Underneath the Eye. <laughs> um, there's Blood Whistle. <laughs> and there's White Reflections. I do, I, bl- do Blood Whistle. Yeah, I, I, did, I was trying not to laugh because I didn't want to influence anybody. Uh oh. Curious. This, this page contains content that is not safe for work. What? Um, all right. Continue. Look, if I if they hear about a bloody whistle at my work, I am out the door. <laughs> There's pictures. Pictures? Oh my God, there are. What a um, bloody whistle! <laughs> God, listen. If I post this in the chat, can you look for a second? Okay. Um. I don't think I can stream the link. Oh, but... I know. I know. Oh yeah, that's right. Um. I'll, all right. I'll, I'll put it to you. I'll tell you what. I'll post it to you first on Skype if you can look real quick. Okay. I'm going to pause this exciting playthrough for a second. Let's see. All right. Um. Ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn it. All right. Um, listen. Okay. I, everybody look at Ad Slow Beef. I, I'll, I'll tweet it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, all right, I tweeted it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> that is very uncharacteristic of Toad, in my opinion. <laughs> Everybody in the dress. <laughs> yeah, I think people are singing. <laughs> Hear us cry. I'm not even sure the story can hold up to this. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, the, wait, are creepy positive things supposed to be things people claim they actually saw? I, I, I think so, but I think that people go nuts with it. It becomes like a... I don't know, honestly. I... Can I get some props, by the way, please? Okay. What'd you say? I got oh, the yeah. uh, the star picture. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Here, here it's cry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Why is All the right. bloody whistle crying? I gotta find out. Um please give me the deets. It's it's a long one, but anyway. Alright, um, we got probably got time. <coughs> There's even a picture of what the bloody whistle looks like, but it's alright. Forward. This is a recorded blog of a college student who's playing a modified version of Super Mario Brothers 3 on his computer. Shortly after submitting the last entry, he committed suicide in his dorm room. Surely. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just want to look at the picture one more time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> June 5th, 2012. A friend of mine recently sent me what he claims to be a sca- what he claims to be a scary Super Mario Brothers 3 hack that he wanted me to try out. Because he didn't have the courage. I started this blog to record my progress through the game. Sure. Yeah. Um, he's even got he's got this from a site that's no longer active, and I've seen some pretty scary occurrences with emulator games before. Just look at Ben. That's the majority's mask. Sure. Yeah. All of that aside, however, there was something definitely off about this ROM. Its title was SMB3 colon BW. That's pretty <laughs> off. Anyhow, I won't play any today as I'm quite busy with college and work and such, but I will definitely start tomorrow. It's a great blog. Unfortunately, I get college credit for this paper. June 6th, 2012. I played some of the game today. Obviously, my friend was misinformed as I had played all the way through 1-3 and I found nothing in regular. All the sprites, levels, and sounds didn't have a fluke to their name. Wait, a secret? That must be how you have to unlock it. I swear to you guys, I'll find the warp whistle tomorrow and see what creepy secrets this game has to hide. Look for tomorrow's post. It won't disappoint. Maybe this will explain what the BW in the title stands for. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry, the picture's right here now. Okay, it's okay, that's fine. June, June 7, 2012. I wish I hadn't unlocked that secret. <laughs> This game will be the bane of my existence. I'll try as best I can to explain what happened and what will that and what will certainly entail. I don't know if anyone you believe me, but this sick mockery of <laughs> this this sick mockery of one of my childhood favorites must be exploited. 
and never seen by the eyes of any other breathing man on God's green earth. Uh-huh. And, t- and Todd, what I'll call my friend for the sake of privacy and possibly security, do not Possibly send- security? <laughs> do <laughs> not. Send- Sorry. <laughs> no, <I'm> just- <laughs> Do not send that link to anyone else. You'll see why below. I entered the castle stage. Knowing its only secret was the warp whistle, I disposed of a dry bones before donning a raccoon tail with a with a running start. I would think I, this detail wouldn't be so necessary, which again, you were completely horrified by this game, apparently. <laughs> well, you know, I got the leaf, and then I got the mushroom house, and got an item. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> So I disposed of a dry bones before donning a raccoon tail. With a running start, I was flying above the stage until I hit the secret area. My whole life before I hit up on my arrow keypad was completely different. I was happy. I was normal. Oh god. I could wake up in the morning recognizing my own reflection being absolute about my safety. Now it's lies. All lies. I know that this isn't what happened today. My life will become an infernal hell in which every day will be a futile struggle to retain my own sanity. He's really upselling what's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. After... <laughs> After finishing this wretched collage of electronic dejection, I will embrace death like a long-lost lover with open arms. Now to get on with what I'd come to pass. Oh my god. <laughs> The blocks that lined the wall were a gloomy, albeit, albeit polished, obsidian black. Mario's skin had a grayish tint to it, but that wasn't what was wrong with that picture. The music was a sped-up version of the normal bonus room theme. Toad, Creepy. Toad, <laughs> Toad's skull was cracked open and profuse. <laughs> Again, cracked. he puts the most important details second. <laughs> The music was a slight make. Toad's head was split up. <laughs> uh, Toad's skull was cracked open and profusely bleeding, spilling blood onto the floor and making the, <laughs> making the room slippery like an ice stage. What? <laughs> you can't even... Alright. All my metaphors are in terms of video games. <laughs> This is awesome! I have to read all of this. His, his, ma- his mouth was also agape and spewing blood onto the floor. The blood had an eerie reflective quality that should have been graphically impossible for an 8-bit game like Mario 3. Absolutely. I know. I, I walked up to him to hear what it is that he might say. What he had to offer is this. Blood whistle. Hear its cry. I then ran o- towards the chest. And that's where the picture comes from. Yes, that's where the picture comes from. You can see you can see the profuse bleeding and the reflection of blood that should have been impossible on an NES. Which, by the way, is nowhere near the picture. Mm-hmm. Nowhere in the picture, rather. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, I then ran toward the chest to see its contents. The chest was drenched in reflective, realistic blood of the same type and uh, emanated by the orifices. I'm sorry, by the orifices and exposed cranium of the poor little mushroom-headed fellow. Pressing onward, I ran through it to discover its dark secret. Its twisted surprise. I wasn't. I wasn't prepared for the following events. Mm-hmm. A blood-soaked warp whistle. Well, you've been over that. Right. Ominously rose from what I now believe to be the deepest crevice of hell. <laughs> Hell's not very creative. <laughs> oh my god, Satan's own Mario Warp Whistle! <laughs> <laughs> no, Satan was such a meme fan. I who knew? <laughs> god, I can't wait for the haunted Pikmin story. <laughs> um, oh my god, wait, the worst of it! It blipped twice as normal as the normal whistle would. <laughs> it blipped twice as the normal whistle would, rather. I'm sorry. Oh my god, okay, I'm sorry. But it then... Blipped, it blipped twice as the normal whistle would. That, my fellow reader, was the only normality of what I had played today. And why is he a fellow reader? He's writing this. 
it played a deep tune that I can't get out of my head as I write this. The whistle descended, violently striking Mario in the chest. <laughs> what? <laughs> he unleashed a blood curdling scream as it went out into it went into his back and out of his chest. Wait, struck him in the chest. The cr- this cry wasn't it was an eight bit at all. It wasn't even cartoon esque. It was the sound of unfiltered anguish, of utter agony. His expression reflected the same. To end my experience on this perverse version of something I once loved, Mario is transported to the warp zone of the blood whistle. Uh. I call it this because it only had the cookie cutter outline of the quaint island. What? The quaint island? I don't know. Oh, well, I guess when you warp, you know, and you're on the island. Oh, uh, yes, that uh, that quaint island. <laughs> it's quaint. The, the <laughs> Very Mario. quaint. It's the Are first they... thing I think of. Are there like three of them? T- oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, how quaint. The water consisted solely of the same blood aforementioned in my encounter with the whistle. Corpses of Koopas and other enemies of Mario were scattered afloat near the shores. White, menacing eyes glared at me between the waves, surfacing just to glance their evil, cast their evil glance at Mario. Or me, I can't be sure at this point. Wait, isn't Mario impaled on the whistle, though? Or- Paranormal rom activity. <laughs> all of the worlds were indicated by their respected numbers, and all of the dots were crimson. At that point, I noticed yet another abnormality, this time concerning the dot for World 8. Beside it were two 8-bit patches of fire that twisted and contorted in place. Without me pressing any buttons, the whistle stabbed Mario in the ribs. <laughs> it- there is normally a button prompt for that. <laughs> it was a quick time of any miss. Yeah. Um, this cued him to move to the World 2 dot, refusing to pay further attention to the horrors that surely await in the distorted desert. I saved the game and quit. I have played more than enough of my fill for today. I guess that I figured out the acronym from the ROM title meant Blood Whistle the Hard Way. <laughs> Despite the horrors that, that plague this abomination, I will continue to subject myself to the suffering for the sake of all of you. Well, also for mine. It'll help me keep track of the days. And maybe this desperate attempt to cling to my stable freight of mind will prove to be in total vain. There are 5,000 people that have followed this blog in the two days that it's been up. After this pointedly interesting post, I'm hoping to have some more. For those of you, sure you follow- are. <laughs> For those of you following my post, read tomorrow's and share with your friends. I need you to expose the stark luridness of the shell of something I once knew and loved. Well, put it up on, like, Dropbox or something. <laughs> Let other people play it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, looked at, I had to look back at the blood whistle picture. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. June 8th, 2012. How's Mario 3 coming, by the way? Wait, you're on World 8 already? Yeah, I'm beating it you're fast. At the, you're going to play it again, by the way. We're not. It we was a... a long story. Or is it still going? Oh my god, yes. It's okay. It's. We've got a while. This is. <laughs> we're about a quarter through it. Really? Well, better get yeah. to it. June 8th, 2012. Well, I did it. I managed to clench, clench the fickle fibers of my perception of reality long enough to play through Roll 2. Okay. I have come to the conclusion that whoever made this is completely and utterly deranged. There's been a rusted gear or a broken spring in the mechanics of their sadistic mind. Their only purpose in creating this mod was to mentally and psychologically flagellate the naive soul poor enough to take the bait of its mysterious origin. Is that the mission statement behind the from hack, really? <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> I need thesaurus on every single... Um, well, I'm certainly naive to fall in that category. I digress. To the experience. <laughs> Should be the title of this story. <laughs> I find myself asking how I could have missed major things like this yesterday when I saved the game in this world. I couldn't believe what I was sa- saved the game. You couldn't do that in uh, emulator. Or whatever. It's a Mario All Stars ROM hack. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I couldn't believe. You couldn't that. have the blood detailed on an NES version. Mm. No, that's fair. Otherwise, it's not clear if it's penetrating Mario's chest or not. (laughs) I couldn't believe what I was seeing. 
blood of the same texture from before was just a splattered across the desert sand. Sand itself was solitary. Yeah, I... <laughs> worse. Okay, solitary eyes watched me from the pyramids. Pentagrams and other satanic symbols were also infrequent in the environment. This is pretty true of my all right. Okay. Could, oh my god. <laughs> Could this hack be the work of the Illuminati? <laughs> The Nintendo okay. Illuminati. Okay, enough pondering. I need to. I need to finish this. Enough rip. pondering. That's the dumbest thing I could have ever thought of. <laughs> I should get some sleep. I, I, I need to finish this grim tale. <laughs> oh my god, I'm tearing up. Skeletons of Koopas littered the bleak landscape. There is a distinct disturbance with Mario's appearance, though. He looked starved and parched, as one would typically look after a few days in the desert. He is 16-bit, right? 8-bit. <laughs> or 8-bit, eight eight depending on which... <laughs> this is, uh, according to the picture, we saw, I think this is decidedly. Okay. Um, <laughs> could this hack be the work of the Illuminati? <laughs> um, he looked starved and parched, as one would typically look after a few days in the desert. Mario then moved. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's World 2, though. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. He has spent a few days in the desert. Well, wait, did he use the blood whistle and only go to World 2? What an idiot! Some details here. Mario then moved into the 2-1 block without my command, and the music began to play <laughs> shortly. Without my after. command? <laughs> Taking your gameplay for other seriously. They all seem to love this. This was a reversed version of the overworld theme. <laughs> Whis whispers and other paranormal phenomena. Whispers are paranormal. Could be heard playing in harmony with the music, saying cryptic things. After a minute, I began to record the sound. I'll upload it as soon as possible, but I know I definitely can't do it today. <laughs> of course. Right, I'm busy Understandable. <laughs> I have class later. So. <laughs> I'm too creeped out, man. One of the most distinct things I kept hearing was... Let the whistle guide you. And the instrument of blood plays the sweetest tune. It's one of the odder messages that Toad gives you. <laughs> this creeped me out, needless to say. But this, of all things, wouldn't prevent me from playing out the remainder of this game. <laughs> the stage itself was very scary. Again, you can theoretically share this ROM hack with people, right? Theoretically, yeah. Okay. But he's asking people... Not to. Take my word for it. <laughs> oh my god. Um. <laughs> Sorry, where was I? Um. Sweetest tune. Creep me out. Oh, um. The stage itself was very scary. The sky was grayish blue, accompanied by an almost white sun. The colors weren't bright or cheery in the slightest. The pyramid blocks were faded and cracked, and the wooden blocks were obviously rotting. Obviously. Again, ob 8 bit. <laughs> Marriott. <laughs> Mario's sprite was visibly starving and pleading for thirst. We know, he said. Hey, Pit. <laughs> the fire creatures fixedly stared at me like shark stares at a school of. like a shark stares at a school of fish, seeming to know who their next meal was. The neutral expressions of the Koopas had changed into ones of converged disgust and lo loath. I had obtained the raccoon by now, so I ran along the pipe like a <laughs> Well, I mean, that's still in there. He can be bloody and starving, but he can pick up a leaf and fly around. It's not a problem. A, that was the last sentence in that paragraph. Well, you know, you don't want to leave any plot holes. He's still playing Mario 3. That's important to keep in mind. Oh, this is crazy. I flew for a little while, which was nice. <laughs> which was nice. Yes. It's nice to play Mario 3. Mar Mario's face changed as well, being the normal happy smile you usually see throughout the entire game. He, he smiles? I guess. Alright. <laughs> I relished in the few moments of happiness I sought from this game. These moments were mercilessly ended within the course of a few seconds. <laughs> the, the sky flashed a gloomy black before the blood whistle came and impaled the poor plumber yet again. So it just randomly appears and kills him? <laughs> Mario fell. <laughs> his corpulent figure going limp until he hit the ground with a thump that I swore I could feel. 
He was miraculously alive, his body twitching in a feeble attempt to rise. A fire creature jumped on Mario, who was now pinned to the ground and screaming in pain. His scream was bitterly realistic. Uh-huh. It reeked of such ineffable pain, it hurts me to describe the sheer degree of torture this character was put through. There he was, burning and seething in pain, and there I sat, completely powerless, forced to watch what I thought was the end of his trials on World 2. <laughs> I was so wrong. <laughs> the level select came into view. Whistled whistle through back mario is transported to one of the pyramid levels when the level started the background was an egregious smoke-filled black burst of lightning filled the sky with illumination winged demons and flight were visible upon these strikes also in the skies glowed stagnantly lit pentagrams and 666 of course mm-hmm. what uh, Mario was being carried by two of Bowser's sons up one of the game's pyramid structures. However, this particular structure is vastly different than the regular ones. The bricks were cracked and faded with age. The edges were dragged with dried blood caked each with dried blood caked each block. Hmm? Nothing but a heavy drum beat and the sounds of thunder played in the background. The thunder didn't play in unison with lightning, as happens in most games. (laughs) There was an eerily realistic pause between the flare of the lightning and the boom of the thunder. realistic pause? Wait, yeah, didn't you just say it didn't play? All right. Okay. (laughs) Um, uh, At the top of the structure was reached, I saw the worst thing yet. This story that I wrote. (laughs) Bowser towered above everyone else, intimidating and terrible. Below stood four of his sons, two of which carried Mario, Morton, Iggy, Ray, and Von Koopa. Above the entire scene were the words blood whistle and bright red neon letters. The words blood whistle? (laughs) If you've seen this, please return it. It's a family heirloom. Oh my god. I highly value it. I'm sorry, I'm like crying. <laughs> Blood whistle. Um, uh, Bowser's face had to had to have been ten times more evil than than spelled him. I had ever seen it. It wasn't really that evil in the first place, though. <laughs> his green shell was cracked, and his white spines had dipped in blood. Blood was fresh on his teeth, and also wait, fresh on his teeth also as his serpentine tongue licked them. Making clear on his intentions, uh, uh, making clear his intentions on what to do with Mario after he had disposed of him. Uh-huh. It was then I came to a dooming realization: Mario can't die. The game won't let him. I have ninety-nine lives. <laughs> but, <laughs> however, many things are thrown at him, and however many ways he is brutally maimed, mortality will not escape him. <clears throat> Is that right? Yeah. For a time, that is. He will continue to be sustained by whatever dark force or sick mind that drives the rest of these occurrences to passing until the game's eventual end, in which he will ruefully play and par- painfully par- ruefully and painfully perish. Now that that has been said, to continue today's experience, suddenly Von Koopa produced a dagger. It gleamed with uncanny realism in the light of the blood whistle sign that loomed above. Eight bit. After a brief pause, he. Pre- what are you talking about? You saw that picture. That was beautiful. Okay. <laughs> After a brief pause, he began to slice Mario's chest open. What? Mario again brayed that fearful cry, a cry that implied he would die only to endure torture of <laughs> ten times the magnitude. Zero Tear- Dark Von Koopa. <laughs> Tears streamed down his face as Vaughn removed his heart, still <laughs> pumping. I think I know what we have to do for the next Galaxy 2 update. By I, the way. I think so. <laughs> he handed it to Bowser, who ate it with a crunching chomp. His sons laughed as he did this, blood flowing from Mario's exposed abdomen. With a bark from their twisted father, the sons shamelessly began to regurgitate and tear apart what was open. As they were doing this, Mario slowly turned his head towards me and uttered a single question through tears and blood. (laughs) Why? 
I asked myself, I, I myself asked the very same question. Why would they treat him as an animal, if not less, for their amusement? Why would someone initiate the genesis of such a horrid contraption? A contraption in which life and death have no meaning in our, in our manipulates. Is that a word? Uh, a, con a contraption in which concepts, morals, remorse, and mercy are completely foreign? It makes me shudder to think that there is someone sick enough out there to put a character through this kind of unbearable hell just to sit back and laugh. It makes me absolutely sick to my core. <laughs> it makes me absolutely sick to my core. That's one of the stronger oh. reactions to a ROM hack I've ever seen. Oh, that reminds me of another thing. <laughs> okay. You're, you're probably wondering as to why I so complacently talk about Mario as if he's a human being. A human who suffers pain, sorrow, depression, starvation, and thirst like the rest of us. A human who is capable of feeling happiness, remorse, goodwill, and love like anyone else. It's because... That was exactly what I was thinking just now. It's because I am thoroughly convinced that he is. Please, Based please. what? <laughs> Your story? Please don't stop following this blog because you think I'm insane. That will come later. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that inside this game is a co character with a complex range of emotions. Someone who feels like you and me. Sounds like a Danganronpa fan. But it's just a game, right? Oh, I it's thought you were reading the Danganronpa thread. <laughs> I pretty much, yeah. Okay. But it's just a game, right? It's just a contrived mixture of code and data put together to present words and images, correct? Wrong. I, <laughs> I know with everything inside me that Mario has to be alive. <laughs> what? I What's your evidence? I have seen him truly happy and truly sad. <laughs> and, it, and at one point, I may even see him truly angry. Oh, boy. He, fe he feels like any other living, breathing human being. I don't know how. I don't know why. I don't know how something so human could rise from something so truly inhuman. A character with a soul com seemed completely impossible to me before I played this hack. I now have a goal with this game to keep to keep this poor creature safe. What poor creature? Mario. Uh huh. I suppose now I'll tell you. I suppose I now know the real truth. I'll see you all tomorrow, same time, same place. Uh huh. Holy shit! Is that the whole story? No. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, this is a blog, like you said. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, just, okay, this goes up to June 13th, and then there's, uh, we're on June 9th. Okay, good. <sighs> it's me again. Oh, June 9th, 2012. It's me again. <laughs> I had a horrible range of nightmares that are a direct result of me playing this game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's the chat doing? <laughs> no, how are you guys doing? <laughs> are you still in, oh, you're doing World 8. you still watching? <laughs> Three, oh my god. <laughs> Does it even matter what I do at this point in the game? <laughs> um, some really weird stuff also went down. Before I get into today's gameplay, I'll have to go through this so you guys have an interactive record of my dreaming habits related to this game. Oh my god. I myself am having a hard time as to how they were so close to home and what they mean for my seemingly inevitable downfall. Before I tell this, I have to let you on on a piece of relevant information. In the fourth grade, I used to play the recorder. Oh, of course you did. That explains everything, actually. <laughs> Every kid had to learn some musical skill, and I liked wind instruments because of their method of play, appearance, and sound. Such is the irony of the instrument that has caused me all this grief. In my dream, I was playing this instrument in a dark room. I was my fourth grade self, just coolly playing Marietta Little Lamb. <laughs> coolly. Out of nowhere, I began to cough. I had choked up some blood that materialized within and around my recorder. I cover it covered it and soon filled it. Blood began to pour in great quantity out of all the recorder's holes. It soon began to float in midair and hover. A few seconds passed and then it struck me in the chest. It had impaled me going directly through my heart and what? And every other wait, going directly through my heart and every other vital artery one could think of. Does this guy know anything about biology? There's quite a few. I think so. <laughs> he went through him up quite a few times. <laughs> I woke up, the sheets plastered to my bare chest with Ooh. sweat. I was completely fine, not a scratch on me. As I sat there in bed, afraid of how I'm sure the game did this, or maybe it was just me losing my sanity, I began to hear noise coming from my laptop. 
It was closed, but a faint muffled humming sound was clearly audible. I warily, warily approached my computer, the machine almost looking alive. I then opened it up. It was a picture of a SMB3 Raccoon Mario sprite on a black backdrop. <gasps> uh huh. He was chained up by his legs and feet, and the chains reached outside the screen. The blood whistle set as, sat as the centerpiece of it all through Mario's chest. The, t the tune of the blood whistle played over and over, a loop that only exacerbated the sound within the walls of my psyche. I tried exiting out of whatever this program might have been, but the window wouldn't close. Well, your computer froze. I eventually had to take out my laptop battery, which didn't sit too well with my OS. Luckily, I didn't lose... <laughs> okay, we're kind of getting to some stupid details. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't lose any files. <laughs> now for the gameplay. All right. I was on a weak imitation of the World 3 level map. The water was none other than blood. Ravenous fish jumped out of the water. Looks of tribal hunger on their faces. I'm interested to see what like the giant the giant world's gonna be like. <laughs> there was something off about Mario's map representation I noticed right away. Along with his raccoon tail, the blood fixture was now a permanent fixture throughout his body. I'm sorry, along with his raccoon tail. His skin had dulled a little from its prior shade of gray, now more outwardly noticeable. His mustache now had dots of red cling to it as well. You see that from the map screen? Pretty detailed. Without my or Mario's control, needless to say, I was moved to the first underwater stage. A cherry red tint absorbed the entire screen. This was to be expected, as the water looked blood ridden from the outside as well. I swam down the left side of the level to get a fire mushroom. As soon as Mario a got fire it, fire mushroom. Oh yeah, wait, I didn't even notice that. What, what does that well, do? Well, I mean, it is you know a cursed video game. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good <laughs> you enough. Grow, you grow, but then you're on fire. As soon as Mario got it, his his outfit changed. He got an evil simper on his face. He looked at me and said, "Revenge, yes." I confirmed his. Huh? <laughs> I confirmed his suspicions, and then we set off for the danger that looked near. The fish cast malevolent gazes at Mario as he swam by, incinerating them. His normal happy smile returned. So did mine. The annihilation of the carnivorous critters didn't last long before Mario and I faced a hellish dilemma. There was a, la <laughs> there was a large fish with rows of razor-sharp teeth. Below him were two power-up blocks, one black-looking and one purple -looking. I assumed that these were supposed to mean red and blue. Obviously, there was no progress from this point without finding out what these blocks had in store. Mario, Mario's expression changed back into its gaunt appearance that he has had for the majority of the game. <laughs> Knowing I had no other choice, I uh, dauntingly hit the block that was black in appearance on the left. The fish swam around from its position on top of us and began to tear off Mario's limbs. By this time, a group of fish had congregated around the entire scene. Their laughs were deep and short, registering his barks for the 8-bit sound processor. He's speaking to you, the iron. Mario's unable body wobbled as he bled out, spewing black across the red. When he finally died, the big fish began to laugh. After a couple seconds, Mario's limbs regrew. With the blue block remaining, I hit it to get this all uh, get this all over with. Bubbles stopped coming from Mario's mouth. He cried out for help, but that only made the problem worse. He sucked in tons of water, his hands around his neck. His face began to grow from gray to blue in a matter of moments. He kicked and fought, but he only wore himself down. Getting angry, he began to incinerate random fish that had gathered in the crown. The fish began to laugh louder. They laugh? For every fish he killed, two more appeared in its place. After a while, he just gave up. I watched as Mario uttered his last gurgle on World 3, the blood whistle stabbing and taking him into way. I saved and quit with haste. See you all tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Is that the end? No. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. We're a little over halfway. Seriously? Well, I'm at the uh, credits now. We have to play another game. 
Just play, just play Mario 1 and hope for the best. Great. June 10th, 2012. Campus police gave me a visit today. Apparently, one of you had reported my comments related to suicide and claimed I was insane. As a result, I eliminated all personal information from this blog. I located the person who reported me and banned him. I, I also have an IP tracker, so don't any of you try that. Speaking of followers, 50,000? I never expected this page to accumulate 50, this many. 50,000? I never expected this page to accumulate this many active viewers. Wherever this popularity or notoriety came from, I am grateful. Now for today's gameplay. Uh -huh. after, after today, I'll be lucky to finish the game. Um, Princess Toadstool's uh, letter appeared after the previous screen from World 3 faded out. She was squirming and shifting around. Bowser's hand covered her mouth and nose, but it was easy to see the fear in her eyes. They darted left and right in stark true fear. Bowser continued to have that sadistic smile on his face as he struggled with her. After a minute and a half, Peach began to change. Her eyes grew an ominous reed as she pushed Bowser's arm away with inhuman strength. She cackled like a loon, blue veins bulging so noticeably that they were clearly visible through her white satin gloves. Bowser then began to cower in timidity. The text on the letter said only this. Blood whistle. <laughs> Come on. Hear its cry. <laughs> Peach. <laughs> the, the letter scene was abrupt, abruptly cut off and the World 4 level select map was brought into view. Goombas and Koopas of all sizes appeared, furious and hungry as ever. There are different is, sizes? Yeah, remember World 4? Oh, like right, tiny, giant tiny. land people coming yeah. in the next, okay. Goombas and Koopas of all sizes appeared, furious and hungry as ever. This edition made sense. This was the giant tiny world that the shown enemies would be dimensioned as such. The normally green grass was withered and dead. The small patches of water were blood. Mario was still in fireball fatigues that he had done in World 3. <laughs> Those fireball fatigues. Yeah, you know, Mario is often Call of Duty World. <laughs> when compared, uh, when, when compared to the other worlds, the map for this one was vastly less disturbing. Mm. I would go so far as to call this tolerable. Mario moved World 4-1 into whatever nightmarish scenario this stage had to offer. 4-1? 4-1? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's going through all eight. Okay. I hope not. <sighs> the stage had the usual kinks of any level in this game. The sky was black, which only had the white clouds vibrantly contrast. The reversed version of the ground level played once, once again played. The wood, as it had been before, was decaying and wasting between Mario's feet. The pipes were faded and cracked in various places. All the enemies still possessed the same carnivorous looks of their intergame counterparts. There was, oddly enough, a startling abundance of them. Koopas and, Goombas, uh, Koopas and Goombas danced around in a ritualistic manner. Mario was visibly petrified as he tried to avoid them, my arrow keys keeping them inches away from his life. Amidst all the din, there hovered a, sing a solitary power-up block. It was regular in appearance. Nothing was outwardly off about this, which greatly surprised me. Not knowing what horrid item it contained, I bumped it in blind vein. That maybe it could help me. You can most likely infer from the intonation I made in the preceding paragraph that I was completely mistaken. <laughs> what appeared next is what I dreaded. That damn whistle. It was, <laughs> it was sitting there, <clears throat> blood washing over it as it rose from the yellow square. Washing over it? Yeah, you, you, I guess like in his dream, where it just, I don't know. Uh -huh. I, can't, I can't, it sat there almost beckoning my name. Huh? With the... With the opposing enemies, I had, no, had I knew I had no other choice. I took the weapon from its place, fruitlessly hoping for the best, readily expecting the worst. The on-screen foes ceased all activity. Their faces returned to a neutral bank bank state. <laughs> uh, they're <laughs> bankers this whole time. They're all tellers now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good job. That's actually the bank whistle we got. <laughs> <laughs> Here it's savings. Um, <laughs> five minutes, they stood in place like this, not moving a muscle. I jumped around to try to kill them, but to no avail. It's almost as if they were frozen within the confines of time itself. 
as if for specifically them, all interstellar and physical continuity came to a careening halt. Then they began to move. After, after the first couple had did it, I realized what truly was going on. What? This was a mass suicide. Most of them just jumped in the nearest hole, but others performed incredible feats of ac- <laughs> Wait, but others performed incredible feats of acrobatics and medical possibility? Hmm. One Koopa was bashing his head in on a pipe. Another Goomba jumped six or seven times his own height, turned around in the air, and sent blood flying everywhere with a great splat. Soon all of the enemies were dead. Their remains were spontaneously upchucked from the trench below. So he's been a- playing a ROM hack this whole time, right? Yes, for okay. days, okay. and blocked about it. Okay. A grisly mixture of guts and gore littered the entire remainder of the level. Mario shuffled through the remains, horrified with tears streaming on his face throughout. Random, deep, ba- uh, bassy tones played with nothing else to accompany. Realistic, squishy sounds were emitted every time Mario took a step in the shadowed carnage. Very realistic. Again, 8-bit. He, he continued to cry for the, for the duration of the level. <laughs> what? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it was the least... <laughs> Sad by this. Oh, <laughs> poor to me. That's how Mario cries, right? Yeah, I'm assuming. Or oh! <laughs> the whistle faded into view and followed Mario a few inches above his head like a pestil- pestilential virus. Mm-hmm. After he cleaned it, uh, cleared it, of course, the whistle went straight through his chest and Mario's headed to World Five. The game has a habit of putting me where it needs to be, so I closed the window without saving. What? <laughs> Witnessing all that death really racked my nerves. Sure, it might be the game. I'll bet. All that realistic 8-bit death. (laughs) Sure, it might be a game, but with the things this game had to present to me, I'm starting to lose my perception of reality. (laughs) I think that happened a long time ago. (laughs) Basically. I'm starting to wonder to myself what is real and what is inside the computer. (laughs) These two things are quickly fusing into one. The lines, they're blurring. Pretty soon the days will start fading together, and then I'll, and by then I'll have lost all sense of reality. I hope to see you all tomorrow. I don't know how much longer I can put up with this game. Well, delete it. No, <laughs> no it's not a game. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what this is. It's a space station. <laughs> June 11th, 2012. Oh, hey, I'm back. There we go. Is he, like, eating or doing anything else? <laughs> Um, it's June, it's summer break. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, oh, shit. Phone ran out of power, sorry. Oh. So we'll take a quick, tiny break. I, I'm, I'm Not on I, this climax! <laughs> Don't leave uh, us hanging, bro! Alright, June 11, 2012. People are just getting sick of this Mario game I'm playing. <laughs> um, uh, uh, there have not been many more mishaps with you, all of you so far. Uh, any more mishaps with you all so far, which puts me at rest. As as of today's gameplay, I fear for my own life. <laughs> I feel I feel as if something is coming after me, uh-huh. l- lurking, seeking me out as to make immediate my demise. God, he's... never before has anything like this ever happened. Never before has anything electronic made me truly afraid, truly scared. Sure, I'm. I most likely will get no sleep tonight. Nothing in particular occurred. It's June 12th. <laughs> Nothing in particular occurred. It's just, you'll find out below. Okay. I was in the middle of the cloud portion of World 5. The sky theme played, except it was drastically slow and demonic whispers were clearly audible. The whispers were almost the same as the ones I heard back in World 2. Mario was outfitted with the Tanuki suit, which naturally suited the environment. What? They were... There is nothing there except two things. A red dot, yes, and a card game. Perfectly suited for the Tanuki suit. <laughs> card, the card game <clears throat> I- icon looks similar enough to the regular game clone, except the spades rolled across a red background instead of a blue one. Now, for whatever reason, I was allowed to choose what path to take. I chose to do the card game, hoping it would serve as some sort of reprieve from all the madness. This was not the right choice. Toad didn't explain the rules of the game like normal. Instead, I was plunged into the rolling slots. Besides the slots was a risky scenario. What? What? 
to Toad was on a guillotine. He looked to the camera with, at the camera with timid, teary eyes. He was also vigorously shaking his head. He shook his hands in a futile effort to free himself from this appalling apparatus, but nothing came of it. The entire picture engulfed me so much that I didn't even notice the slots. I cautiously pressed them, trying as best I could to wind them up given the stress of the situation. I failed and had to pay the personal price. The blade fell with breathtaking speed. Toad was beheaded right then and there. And then the blood whistle stabbed me. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> His head did a couple spins in the air before landing in a conveniently placed nearby basket. The initial spins flayed blood across the white room. Blood filled the basket and filled it up. Toad's body sprang blood from the stump where his head used to be. <laughs> oh, actually, <sighs> out, of, out of nowhere, the blood whistle came down and struck his torso. <laughs> Okay. Good. <laughs> plus, plus was like, wait, wait for me. Um, this scene faded out and back to the map. I was moved to the only remaining destination in World 5. Silent lightning streaked across the licorice black sky. Gray clouds and Mario were the only other consistently visible things. As far as everything goes, silhouettes of winged demons flew and danced in the background. I tried turning into the stone structure the Tanuki suit is so famous for, but it failed. <laughs> no, mu no music at played. None at all. The demons would be heard whispering what sounded like a variety of languages. Spanish, German, and Latin were the most prevalent ones. Mm. A primal fear of the unknown gripped me as I blindly navigated the level. Judging by the look on Mario's face, it plagued him, al it plagued him also. What? This stemmed from childhood, which made it all the worse. What? I not only felt like Mario was in danger, I felt like my livelihood and well-being were in danger. No, you didn't. Oh god, this gets so bad. <laughs> At that moment, one of the demons swooped down. I would say the most accurate way to describe this creature would be a miniature Cthulhu. <laughs> or, no, I'm sorry, a Cthulhu. So it's like Hulu, like, you know, the oh, Hulu sure. Plus that you watch things on the link. Sure, sure. Sure. All right, a miniature C Cthulhu. Its, its claws plucked out Mario's eyes, making them, making them bleed profuse, or ble profusely bleed. <laughs> he unleashed an ephemeral yet bone-chilling cry. After the searing pain relented, Mario trudged on. What are you up to in this? I'm almost done. <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, never mind. <laughs> Uh, Gave me more time for the story. His face was now void of any and all expression. It was because he knew as well as I did he would would be torn apart brutally and slowly, but it would happen. After a few more seconds, or after a few more seconds, the second demon came. It was identical in appearance to the first. Hmm. It swooped down with the grim black bat wings and did its portion of damage. After it was said and done, the thing had torn Mario's arms off. Mario stopped dead in his tracks. He sobbed loudly, knowing the world the worst was yet to come. I felt so sorry for him that the words escaped me. He continued with a morose look. His normal walk slowed to his shuffle. Not a few seconds after that, the final solitary specter came down. He did his work with one big slash. <clears throat> Mar Mario was now without his legs, and his lump of a body sat there. He sadly wept in utter despair. He knew the end was near. He tuned to me and choked out this. I'm sorry you had to witness this. <laughs> Everything. Those were his last spoken worlds on World 5 before a gaggle of Hell's minions descended and tore apart what remained of him. His entrails were liberally exposed as they were... They wow, were... the Skyworld is hard in this version. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> You need, you need the P-Wing for this. <laughs> Apparently. His entrails were liberally exposed as they regurgitated in their cruel feast. When the dust cleared, a mere shell of him remained. All you could see of his open stomach were his... Uh, what? Hold on. <clears throat> all, you, all you could see of his open stomach were his open spine and back muscles. Huh? Huh? Doesn't work. Um... As I had predicted, the blood whistle came to transport him into whatever hellish situation he contemplated would be worse than the last. Consider it sheer luck if I may make another post tomorrow. If I did, <laughs> if I do, it may be my last. Sure. 
Sure. It's a spoiler, it's not. But it, we're getting close to the end. Oops. June 12th. Uh, yeah, June 12th, 2012. I'm starting not to care anymore. I am in the throes of such... I, I feel the same way. Um, <laughs> I, I'm in the throes of such a severe depression, it's all starting to fade away. Everything. I wrote all this. <laughs> School, friends, family. It's safe to say this game is single-handedly ruining my life. Such sadness has never become me ever before in my life. My grandfather died when I was young, but that didn't close to equate what I'm feeling now. Wow, it's a direct result of the level I played today, which I'll get into right now. World 6 appeared. Ice was everywhere. This is the one part that correlated to the unaltered universe. Nothing else did. Oh my god. The ice was none other than frozen, realistic blood. <laughs> Like, did they ever... I mean, Icker, Tar, there's other evil substances. I don't know. Anyway. Cri cri crystallized pieces of crimson droplets bordered the ice blocks. Blood filled in the small pockets of water that were... That were what? Oh. Right. Of course, there was only a solitary dot on the map. Mario entered it, and when I knew that was ever... What was that? And I knew that whatever was to pass... It would be tenfold of what had already happened. Does he know that? Pure sable white was the only thing that constituted of the backdrop. Blocks of blood ice served as slippery ground. Mario slid as I controlled him. He appeared happy. Overjoyed might be more accurate. Here he had nothing to deal with. Just him in open space. Five minutes passed, then ten. All the way through, Mario was happy as I let him run around and fly. He had regained the rac raccoon tail. It seemed like he had all the time in the world. The clock ticked and ticked, and they all seemed right in the game. Making my way through the level, I found out it had no end. Time, oddly enough, would turn out to be the ultimate enemy. At the 20-minute mark, a tempest began to pick up. A flurry of snow and wind descended. Uh, excuse, sorry. Um, a, flurry of, a flurry of snow and wind ensnared Mario, and now he began to curl his tail. His teeth chattered and his body shook. He soon had to sit down. Mario and I, and I soon figured out how the game plan to snuff him out this time. With ice and time, his teeth chattered and his body shook. He soon had to sit down. Mario and I soon figured out how the game plan to... Wait, what? Hmm? Oh, sorry. He sat and tried to heat himself. This, needless to say, was a less than feeble attempt. Nothing but the creepy bass beats from the world from World Five played. Mario's skin began to turn a bright a light blue. Nevertheless, he still sat and brooded in the icy cold. It was then that the utmost feeling of sadness had encapsulated me. I couldn't fathom my sympathy. I couldn't begin to describe how bad I felt that his death was absolutely inevitable, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. Just simply watch in shock and dejected awe. Frostbite soon took his hands. Ten minutes that after that, World, Mar World 6 Mario was no more. Just a frozen block of a man sitting there in, in the middle of an infinite win winter wilderness. After the sadness came feelings of sheer loneliness. I felt abandoned and alone. Just like Mario sitting in the middle of that ice field. I felt as if no one would save me from the torture of this game. The blood whistle came down and made a chunk sound as it hailed his chest, taking him to the next level of hell. I closed the emulator window like always and ended the self subjective torture. I will bring myself to play this game tomorrow. But mark my words, I'll play this, I'll play the last tomorrow, and then hopefully, uh, I'm sorry, and then this blog will hopefully live on in my memory. So my tribulation can be seen by the world. Be here, same time, same place. All right, June 13th. It's still going. This is the last day. Okay. Last entry. Uh, last entry. June 13th, 2012. It is ironic indeed that today is June the 13th. <laughs> the unlucky number, the unlucky day. I suppose today is completely horrible. Today is the last day. I, this is the pipe world, right? World 7? Yes. Um, all right. I have no idea. Anyway. The horrifyingly absurd remake of what I see is, used to see as a wonderful game will soon be out of my life, along with everything else. With this being the last post, I can 
I suppose I can finally be honest about my true intentions ever since I finished World 2. I'm going to take my own life. <laughs> this game has caused me sorrow on such an ineffable level that there is no other option. Life. No will other option? <laughs> it's... Well, life will never be the same. Okay. Mom and Dad, I love you. <laughs> Michael and Kelsey, you guys be good. Listen to Mom and Dad. They have a lot of valuable lessons to teach you. Like, how to not, 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 not write this. Uh, <laughs> lessons that I learned but can now never apply again. Now for what you 75,000 followers read the post for. 75,000. The rest of this game. Hell itself is what the game brought me to. I suppose this was intended to convey World 8. Hey, what about 7? No, not Hell. Mm. Worse than Hell. Bodies were chained up in the background, enduring a myriad of tortures. Well, isn't that hell? Sounds like it. The only pain wasn't strictly felt from injuries, though. The coughs. Um, the coughs? Yeah, the coughs. Dying wheezes and vomiting in the background reeked of pestilence and suffering. Fires had blazed in certain people as well. The flames had an actual burning quality to them. Not like regular 8-bit fire. Hmm. Flesh, eyes, and other internal organs and tissue constituted the walls and down. It the hell I'm certainly going to exist. I think it looks something like this. Mario stood before a possessed princess toadstool. Her dress was ripped in several places and splattered with blood. Her eyes gleamed red, the flames casting an evilly ma maniacal allure to his appearance. Bowser and his six sons were tied to wooden poles with terrified looks on their faces. Wendy, for some reason, didn't appear anywhere in this game. Mm. <laughs> On the one hand, Peach brandished a sizable dagger. In the other, the blood whistle. She walked over to Bowser and looked him into the... <laughs> Sorry. She walked over to Bowser and looked him in the eyes. Technical limitations slightly hindered the interpretation of what events passed. <laughs> <laughs> but it was easy enough to understand what was going on. Through his gag, Bowser pleaded with her not to harm him. <laughs> she brought the knife close to him and he froze up. He was obviously paralyzed with fear. Her mouth got close to his ear and text rolled along the bottom of the screen, conveying the text of what played out given the sound limitations. Weren't there like whispering before? I thought so. This is what enabled Mario to speak in the past. Shh, she whispered. Bowser's innards spilled onto the floor in a great heap. He let out, he let out a monstrous 8-bit roar of pain as this happened. <laughs> monstrous 8-bit. <eight -bit. laughs> Peach laughed, her red eyes reflecting on whatever evil... You know, if he had just gotten a star man, he could have avoided all of this. It's, uh, yeah. The princess proceeded to eviscerate all six of his other sons. Mario did nothing but look on in horror as his mortal enemies were torn apart by a woman he had once loved very much. His face contorted into one of loathing. He'd come all this way to find out the very girl he wished to save had been taken over by an extraterrestrial evil. Huh? Wait, where'd that come in? This na just apparently now. Okay. Just extraterrestrial. Right. <laughs> um, okay. An evil that would not only haunt Mario, but me as well. The sort of evil that doesn't go away when you turn off the game. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of dark force... <laughs> the kind of dark force that follows you to your bedchambers and steals your soul. <laughs> Princess Toadstool paused for a couple of seconds, then came at Mario with the knife. Hey there, Mario, she said as she toyed with the knife. They got a little sharp with me, so I pushed them over to the edge. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you. Mm. Um, I tried to move Mario, but nothing happened. He stood there, afraid of what she would do. She brutally slashed open his arms, legs, and abdomen. Shortly thereafter, the pr princess produced some salt from her billowing dress and sprinkled it all over him. He screamed again, unmoving. The princess Peach you used to know is long gone. The, the power of the blood whistle consumed that girl and made way for me. And speaking of which, she continued as she produced the blood whistle, here it is, hear its cry, with a mocking kiss on the cheek. She began to play Mario the perverse song of the blood whistle. Its notes rotted away the last reserve of good in me. He was heaved by an invisible force into the flames. He cried out as they consumed him. Peach chucked the whistle, making him strike directly in the heart. 
He continued to wall in other anguish as she walked away. As she laughed, he looked into my eyes and bore me this parting message via the text at the bottom of the screen. Do not let your life be as painful as mine was. <laughs> I do not hold reservations against you as you tried your best to keep me alive. <laughs> I commend you for that. <laughs> Goodbye, Bradley, and good luck. The tune of the blood whistle continued to play as the screen panned out of Mario's hell. How he knew my name is Bradley continues to, befu to befuddle me. How could he have such depth, such personality? I don't know if this is whether this is a result of the game being haunted as it truly is, or that <clears throat> the, the fact that someone's could have been captured inside this ROM. Whatever the reason of it, of this, of everything that's come to pass with this animation, I'm glad I'm finally done. I've made all my goodbyes at the beginning of this post. I hope one of you takes the time to save this blog, or at the very least to show the world the true hell I put myself through. I am sure that I sure hope the demented creator of this game isn't festering in the same hell I'm headed for. <laughs> Good goodbye, everyone. Aftermath. Oh. This, <laughs> this blog was the last recorded statement of Bradley before his death. Aftermath. JK. His he had a roommate. Like nobody noticed this. His roommate discovered him four hours after he made the last post. <laughs> Bradley. Com Bradley committed suicide using a recorder that he plugged through his trachea. <laughs> what? Yeah, he stabbed himself with a flute. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Is that possible? Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So that's it then. That's it. Wow.